prepare for the, the next few days ahead, weeks ahead, and I hope that you'll, uh, everybody will get, get this in your heart tonight. The desire of every Christian here tonight should be to be a soul winner. Uh, Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 30, you know it, but I want to read it again tonight. Proverbs 11 and verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. What the Bible said, he is wise. I want to preach to you tonight on this subject, four calls for soul winning. A preacher came by one time in our church years ago and he said, Danny, he said, I've noticed one thing about you folks and that is y'all stay after souls. And I thought that was a great compliment. You're not gonna get too far off, bad off doctrine or anything if you'll stay after souls and sinner. As one old guy used to say, keep the main thing the main thing. And the main thing it ought to be stick always the main thing. Many churches get off on side tracks and hobby horses and and uh, uh, political issues and and civil issues and uh, 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 legal stuff and and all and and some of that might be okay. But if we'll keep the main thing, the main thing. Think about it like this: all it's going to matter one day. Is that boy saved? Is that girl saved? All it's going to matter for you one day is if you're in heaven or hell. That's all it's going to matter. Right. It ain't matter how important you've been in this world or who knows your name or what you have. All it's going to matter one day, a hundred years from now, everybody in here will be in heaven or hell. And buddy, that's all it's going to matter then. So this evening, I want to talk about four calls for soul winning. If we believe what we say we believe, and don't tell other people we're criminals. If we don't believe what we say we believe, we're hypocrites. Say that again. If we believe what we say we believe, and don't tell other people we're criminals. If we, if we don't believe what we say we believe, we're hypocrites. So if we're not telling people, we're in trouble. I preached uh, not long ago, if you ain't fishing, you ain't following. Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you become fishers of men. So if you're not fishing, you're not following. You're not following the Lord if you're not trying to help somebody else come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Quickly tonight, I wanna say this. There is a call from above. There is a call from above. The most clear command that we have to win souls as I preach this morning is the Lord himself. The gospel, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. There is not one person that does not need the gospel. There is not one doctor, not one lawyer, not one farmer, not one baker, not one plumber, not one carpenter, uh, not one social worker, not one city employee, not one school teacher, not one religious figure, not one policeman, not one uh, beggar on the street, not one drug addict down there, not one psychiatrist up in an office. There is not one person that does not need the Lord, people. Uh, the big rich house on the hill, they need the Lord. Uh, those, those shack down on the side of the road, they need the Lord. The same God gospel works up for the rich man in the nice neighborhood as it does for the poor man in the gutter with a sign on the side of the road at Walmart or somewhere. It, there's a clear command of God that we are to go. They said, uh, 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 old D.L. Moody one time uh, saw, saw a picture of a man uh, in water holding a cross and, and lifting him. And then he saw another man uh, holding it to the cross and, and with one hand lifting another out of the waves uh, with the other man. He saw a man uh, going down and he saw another man pulling him out like that. That's the picture of a soul winner. A man drowning and somebody else reaching down and giving him a hand and pulling him out. That's a picture of a soul winner. I'll never forget the first time I heard a man teach on soul winners. Over in Asheville, some, somebody had a, a revival or something over there 
and they had a preacher taught a whole afternoon class on how to lead a soul to the Lord. And I've witnessed ever since I've been saved. But I took that scripture and wrote it down, the Roman road. And I said, buddy, I cannot wait to try this out on somebody. And I did. And I, I got to lead some people to the Lord, and I have got to. But you don't have to do it with the Roman road. You can take any book in the Bible just about and show somebody how to be saved. As a, it is a command of God. It is a command of God. Philip 1 Nathaniel in John chapter 1 and verse 45. Peter uh, in Acts chapter 3 and verse 10. The man's house. Paul in Acts chapter 16. One the Philippian jailer. Uh, uh, Andrew and one his brother in John chapter 1 and verse 40. It is the most natural thing in the world when you get right with God to immediately want to help somebody else come in and get right with God. I'm looking forward to Saturday. I'm looking forward to track going out of here by the hundreds. I'm looking forward to camp meeting flyers. I'm looking forward to big day flyers going out at the flea market. I love to see those teenagers, uh, Rebecca and Ethan and a bunch of y'all. They went over there last year at the youth rally and they had these signs except they were, they were youth rally signs and they was holding these signs up like that right there at that flea market and I'm telling you, I was way down yonder on the end and I could see them things up there. I can see them think, what a testimony that was. What a testimony that was. And there was people came, uh, no doubt, on the count of that. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to. I, that's why I put one of them on the back of my car. I don't do that to show off. I do that because there's thousands of people going down that interstate that get behind me and they read that sign and they get a witness in their heart. I'm telling you, there's a call from above. Everybody here tonight that's saved is called to be a soul winner and witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, number two, not only is there a call from above, there's a call from without. There's a call from without. Acts chapter, uh, over in the book of Acts, that man hollered out when that guy had that dream. He went and dreamed this man. He saw a man in a dream and the man was saying, come over into Macedonia and help us. My, my, I think about Jimmy. Well, Jimmy, Jimmy's having to work at night. He can't be here on, on Sunday night. He's working. But I, I, Jimmy, he was here this morning. Y'all saw him. And he went and preached over there at the rest home this morning and came back. I remember it's been, I don't know, six, seven, five, six years ago, ever how long it's been. Old Jimmy came on the bus. I think Brother Mike got him to come uh, the first time. And Jimmy had been telling some people at work or something like this. I think I got it right. He'd been telling people, I need to go to church. I need to find me a church. I need to find me a church. That's a call from without. That's somebody out there that looking for the Lord. About that time, Brother Mike, Knocked on his door. He said, I want to invite you to church. I've been looking for a church. Jimmy came and sat right back there on that back row. And I remember he sat back there on the back row. I don't know how many, how many times. And I kept going back there and I'd talk to him and I met him. And I said, Jimmy, uh, are you saved? And he said, no, I ain't. I, ain't. I said, when are you going to get saved? And you know what he said? He said, I'm going to get saved on my birthday, Brother Danny. That's what he told me. I know, I, that's unusual, isn't it? I said, man, you may not live to your birthday. You better get saved today. He said, nope. Going to get saved on my birthday. Sure enough, sure enough, his birthday came and he came out and got saved. He sure did. He sure did. Jimmy, I mean, he's been right ever since. And his family come in and got there. Listen, you know what that was? That was a call from without. Hey, how many more Jimmys are out there? How many more daddies are out there? How many more? Jeremy, they heard me preaching on the radio, right? Uh, well, it was near Christmas time or something like that. He'd been on a two-week drunk. And then I'm making you testimony. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not. That, that probably ain't true. Uh, but anyway, uh, he, that was this week. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, but old Jimmy, Jeremy, he, he heard me preaching on the radio. And he called out said, I need help. And come over there to the old building and got saved by the grace of God. Listen, sometimes we get the impression that nobody wants to hear the gospel. Everybody hates the Lord. That ain't true. There's people out there wanting it. There's people out there wish they had somebody tell them the truth. There's people out there wanting to get saved. I guarantee you there's people in Burke County tonight that want to know God and want to know, but all they need is somebody to guide them. There's a call from without. Amen? Amen, brother. There, there's a call from without. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, there are people who, who know they need the Lord and know they need a better life and there's a call 
from without. They say, this has been years ago, and there's probably a lot more than that now. If you lined up all the lost people in the world, everybody in the world that's not saved, and lined them up single file, one right after another, that that line would reach around the world 30 times the center of the earth. 30 times standing one right after another around the globe and the line grows 20 miles a day. That means while me and you from yesterday to this evening, there's enough lost people been added to that list to go from here on the other side of Hickory. One right after another. There's 30 times around the globe and 20 miles a day being added. It would take you four years and 40 days to drive past them in a car going 55 miles an hour. Going past them, driving by those people. Listen, I know, I know that I'm getting backslid when I go somewhere and we go to a restaurant or we go to a mall and I just say, what are all these people doing in here? Oh, my way, I wish this crowd was going. You know, when I'm right with God, you know how I look at it? When I'm really right, I think, man, I wonder where that guy's going. That guy's got a soul. That woman over there, she's going to heaven or hell. That little kid's going to grow up and get on drugs or get in trouble or go to church. Listen, we, we got to be soul conscious. There's a call from without. Number three, there's a call from within. There's a call from within. A preacher told a great soul winner one time, he said, if you don't, uh, if, if you want to have a, a, a big church and, and people coming in being saved, he said, that's fine, that's all right. But he said, I'd rather have a small church and, and a good library and spend plenty of time reading good books. And the soul winner looked back at him and he said, there ain't nothing wrong with you. that couldn't be cured like any other drunk or liar. A trip to the altar. A preacher that says, I just want to keep a good crowd and lock my income coming in and all the bills paid and, and just leave our church like it is and I'm going to study good books and feed the flock on Sunday. He needs to hit the altar just like a drug dealer does. And he needs to say, God, give me a call from within. There ought to be inside of us, every child of God here tonight, something that when we cross paths with somebody, they're going to have a burden for them. Y'all know when I, I play ball, and it's hard for me because I've got a competitive nature like any man. I mean, ain't never been an athlete that don't have a competitive nature ain't worth a hoot. I mean, there, you, uh, that's like somebody, you say, well, I just play, I don't care if I win or lose. What, what are you, what's wrong with you? Uh, 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 there's, uh, there's, there's no such thing. But you know what I, I've had to learn how to do? And I didn't do this growing up. And when I started playing, first time I went to our, our Christian school in Marion, and I started going to the ball games, well, I mean, well, we just done like we did at all the ball games all my life. It didn't, you ain't supposed to do that. Uh, I mean, we was booing, hollering at the referee. I shut up, boo, shoes untied, you know. And, 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 you, and they said, no, in Christian schools, you can't do that. And I said, what? We can't have fun in a ball game? That's the dumbest thing I've heard of in my life. And, and, and they said, uh, you're just supposed to play for fun. And I said, I can't, it's, it, I can't, I'm about to readjust my head here or something. I thought you played to beat the snot out of each other. Amen. Like checkers or anything else. Uh, they're the enemy, we win. I used to tell them boys on the basketball team, I said, boys, our motto is, since we're Christians, win fair if you can. And, I, and we'd laugh and I was just kidding them. Uh, but I, you know, uh, you have a competitive nature. And it took me the longest time to bring that, to, to harness that and say, now look, look. And, and even when we started playing church ball, I, I got towards, no, and I'd get aggravated and say, and I've learned now, I've calmed down a lot. I've calmed down a whole lot. I've trained myself to just, let's, you know what the main thing is out there? Being a witness to them other guys. And I play with a bunch of boys over there, sometimes on Monday, and I know they don't know. And I walk up to them, and we play, and we play. If they say something, I give it to them. I don't call fouls. Never call fouls. Never. I mean, they knock me down. I don't call it. You know why? It's not that big a deal. My testimony's more important than that. And as soon as it's over, I say, hey, you go to church yesterday? Oh, I didn't make it yesterday. Man, you know the Lord's coming one of these days. He's coming. I do that every Monday. Every Monday. 
because my witness and their soul is way more important than a stupid game that don't mean nothing. And the same way on your job, if you have a habit and a, a reputation of losing your temper and cussing everybody out and acting like a jerk around everybody you work with and everything, you, you, you need to realign your priorities and say, hey, the main thing here is that I be a testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ and have a call from within since I've been saved. There's been something inside me that said, hey, it's my responsibility to tell somebody else about God's goodness. There's a call from within. Finally, number four, there's a call from below. There's a call from above. God says, go! There's a call from without. People out there saying, I need somebody to care about me. One night, I was driving in the snow. It's been years ago. I had a little old Toyota truck. And that little old thing, it was like an 87 model or something. Every time it snowed, I just loved to get out and drive that little old truck. We'd go to church and turn donuts in the parking lot, just around and around and around and around like that. Just fine. The pastor, yeah, I know. Uh, you say, what's your scripture for that? Nobody's perfect. That verse I love. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> anyway, I, uh, we, I, I loved it. We'd just, take, just turn that thing in there and slam the brakes on and slide around and around and around. And one night it was coming through Marion, and it had been snowing and ice. And, you know, it's one of them times when it wasn't all snow, it was mostly ice, like about half sleet and half snow. So what was on the ground was crunchy. And I'll never forget, it was 18 degrees that night. Old something like the middle of January. And there's ice on the road about that thick. And I was coming down East Court Street in Marion. And I was driving that little truck, and it's foggy. And I said, is there somebody standing there? And I, I, there was a girl standing on the side of the road, walking. And I mean, it was pouring about half, that's the coldest thing there is when it's half rain and half sleet and half snow. And it was it. And we pulled over and I said, ma'am, I rolled down the window here, I said, ma'am, are you all right? And she come over to the car like this and she was going like that. And she said, <laughs> I said, I said, you need a ride? She, I said, I'll be And they scooted over. She sat over against the window. I cranked that, the, the, the heat up on that, on that heater as hot as I could get it. That girl had on a nightgown, just a little short nightgown down to about right here. No shoes. No shoes. Walking in ice. I'm telling you, I couldn't say it. I, I, I couldn't believe it. I thought I, her, she couldn't even feel her feet. And I said, what in the world is... What are you doing? And she said, my boyfriend, we got in a big fight and he kicked me out. And I said, I mean, that's your boyfriend? He says he loves you? Listen, girls, if a guy loves you, he don't treat you like that. If he does, he's an idiot. Get rid of him. You don't need to be treated. You don't have to be treated like that. I don't care how much he says, oh, baby, I'm sorry, I'll never do it again. That's right, you'll never do it again because I ain't never going to be around you again. Amen. Amen. Well, I heard one other day, yesterday, I believe Kelly's telling about me, one of these DSS works, somebody where the guy beat, beat, his, beat their eyes shut or something, and she said, Mom said, you can't come home, your eyes get better. And beat her eyes shut. And her mom I thought, man, if that was one of my daughters, I mean, I don't think I'd have to do it for You know what? If a man beats you in the eyes, you wait till he's asleep and get you a baseball bat. And even the score, amen? I mean, there ain't no sense in that, people. There's no sense somebody telling you they love you and treating you like that. And I, we took that girl all the way across on the other side of town and let her out where they, she said some of her kin folks live. She was crying. And we witnessed to her. There's a call from without. There's people out there right now. You see them all the time. 
How many of y'all where you live see girls and sometimes guys at four o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock at night, just walking up the road like this right here? We see them up there in Nebo all the time. It's a regular thing. You see, I mean, that's somebody, somebody's kid. That's somebody's kid out there, y'all. That's somebody's little baby walking up the road. There's a call from without. And there's a call from below. In Luke chapter 16, the Bible said the rich man, he died and went to hell. And in hell, you know what he did? He lifted up his eyes and cried and said, Father Abraham, send Lazarus. Somebody help me. I'm burning. I'm in a flame. I'm burning. That's what they're doing in hell. Tonight, they're crying. There's a cry from below. There's a cry from below. There's a cry from below. Heard about a young man who was 20 years of age. He went and heard somebody preach one night just like you're hearing tonight. The next day, at 1.40 in the afternoon, he was hit by a train and killed instantly. I heard about an older man who went to the meetings, count meetings, like I count meetings. He didn't get saved. He said no to God and was laying on his deathbed. And right before he died, he cried out, oh, God, don't let me die. Oh, God, don't let me die like this. God, don't let me die like this. And he slipped from this life right into hell screaming, God, God, please, God, help. There's a call from beneath. There's a call from beneath. My prayer might be and your prayer might be, Lord, lead me to some soul today. Teach me, Lord, just what to say. Friends of mine are lost and cannot find their way. Few there are that seem to care and few there are who pray. Melt my heart and fill my life. Give me a soul today. I'm going to ask you all to pray for me tonight. I'm going to ask everybody in here to pray for me, the preacher, the pastor. And you pray, God, help Brother Danny. Be a soul winner. I'd like to see somebody saved. That I get to lead the Lord. I, there's plenty of them. There's fish everywhere. Wouldn't you like to catch a fish? I'm not talking about getting out here and fast talking somebody into something they don't even understand. And you know, just so you can say, I ain't talking about a bunch of junk like that. I'm talking about really getting to lead somebody to the Lord Jesus Christ. And them genuinely being born again. I think sometimes we're so afraid of easy believism, we go into hard believism where nobody can't get saved. And the truth right now in the middle, like it always is. I got saved. I got saved. You got saved. There's somebody out there just like you was. There's somebody out there just like you was. And they need you. You might be the only one that can understand where they're coming from. There's a call from beneath. Let's stand by our heads for prayer tonight. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I want you to think of your brothers and sisters, your mom and dad, your aunt and uncle, your cousins, your friends or family. And she's playing softly. And let's pray, Lord, just make me a soul winner. I want y'all to pray for me. I preach to myself tonight. I need this. I need this. Y'all pray for me. Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you'd make me and us soul winners. Help me, Lord. Help me, Father. God, I pray that you'd help me not to be afraid. Help me not to be ashamed. God, don't let me be cold and calloused. Help me to care about people and their souls that are never going to die, that are going to heaven or hell. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, help us to be soul winners for the glory of God. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Lord, as we hear that call from above, we hear that call from without, and we hear that call from within, and Lord, we hear that call from beneath. I pray you'd help us to respond to it. Be a soul winner for the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to commit our life to you right now to be a witness and a soul winner.
for the Lord Jesus Christ. Do what ought to be done in our lives. Fill us with the Holy Ghost. Help us, we pray, and we'll thank you and praise you for it. Bless all my brothers and sisters in Christ. These are in the altar praying tonight. These are back in the nursery. Back, Lord, those that maybe had to work, maybe are sick, couldn't be here, I pray you'd bless them. Bless Shining Light Baptist Church in the days ahead. Bless our choir. Bless the camp meeting. Bless the big day next week. Bless all the efforts. Lord, may revival break loose here. Bust the devil out of here, Lord. I pray the Holy Ghost will come down this place and do a great and mighty work. I plead, I plead the blood over this services. I pray the demons of devils will be rebuked and, and run away from here. And the power of God will melt on this place. God do a mighty work in these days. Let us see one more. Move of your power and spirit. We'll thank you for what you do and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. For his sake. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Amen.